So when you get down to the bottom of it, uh, what if somebody says, well, life is a video game. I really like Grand Theft Auto, and uh, I'm going to go for this. What if, what if it takes the... Uh, what if people take this message and they say, well, great, I'm going to go blow something up or I'm going to go steal a car and sleep with hookers. What, what's the... Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, hey, what's, what's to stop me to go halo on everybody, right? We can skip morality now? Now we can begin to engage morality because, uh, and this is kind of fun because one of the things I've sort of thought about is that the universe is really either amoral or be moral. And um, one of the things that Tom puts forth in his model, which is something we're going to go into in the film, is that he opens his model with two assumptions, and that's consciousness exists and evolution exists. Okay. And then you get the idea that consciousness evolves. So what makes consciousness evolve? Tom says it's intent that the reason why you do something, that that's the whole point of this simulation, of physical reality simulation, is it's why you do what you do. And you get a lifetime. And we have a lifetime. And while you have a lifetime, it's all about racking up experience points, okay, and seeing if you evolve and develop and level up. Anyone who plays video games is going to be familiar with the metaphor of leveling up, okay? Right. The whole idea that Tom's putting forth that I found most attractive in a way is that he is pushing morality. And the morality is this, is that a you can think about consciousness in the terms of entropy. Okay. In physics, entropy is all about uh, whether or not it's something is ordered or whether or not something is totally disordered and disarrayed. In other words, if something has high entropy, it's very gaseous and you can't really make it do much work. But if it's a solid, you know, like a rock or something, well, then you can throw it and it has inertia. It has inertia and it has gravity and all this kind of stuff. So it's focused. It's a focused point. It's okay, so what's a high entropy consciousness? What's really dispersed? What's really chaotic? Well, someone who's neurotic, someone who's got a lot of anxiety, someone who's really afraid, someone who's got, like, total terror all the time. All right? You know what those kinds of people look like. They have very little options available to them. They, as a conscious entity have very few options available to them because they're horrified of everything. They have to protect themselves, they feel. And that, that, that's the whole point of their existence. This is sort of like self-protection, exclusive self-protection. And that all the other individuated units of consciousness, as Tom calls them, are out in the world and they don't really have anything to do with you. On the other hand, you have, well, where are we going to go next? Love. Well, what is love when we see it in action? What is love when it's not like, say, romantic love where you can get spurred and your heart broken and you have, you know, all these expectations that can be, you know, destroyed by another person because they didn't meet your expectations. Well, if you go into love that looks more like a topic or more like unconditional love in the Buddhist sense of the term, you have what? Someone who's really cooperative, someone who really works together, someone who helps the whole, someone who realizes that they're part of an organism you know, a much greater organism. And it's the, not just the human organism, but the organism that is life itself, the entire biosphere, and, and then some. All right, so that's what he puts forth, that consciousness actually evolves towards love, that that's where it wants to go, that that's what it evolves towards. And the thing is that if you think of, like, what he would call low-entropy consciousness individuals, I think you can imagine some right away, like Yoda, right? Something like that, or Dalai Lama, or... You know, Ama, the hugging saint who just hugs everybody and makes everyone feel good and from that builds up these charities. I mean, I don't know how corrupt these people are <laughs> in real life. I don't know if they are or they aren't. But, you know, on the outside, they look like they're really great people, that they're really doing good things. That's what he's putting forth right here, that it's not just a blind video game, but that this video game exists specifically to evolve consciousness. And it's put itself in a scenario like The Sims where you and I are human beings engaging each other so we can see what happens when you do something with an intent that's, like, nasty. All right, that's, that's to hurt somebody or something like that. What kind of life do you see people end up living? You know, you see lives that are, like, miserable and isolated. And, you know, you may get a lot of money and you may get a lot of wealth, but, you know, you don't get a lot of love. You don't get a lot of companionship. You don't get a lot of relationship. You don't really connect. In other words, you don't 
integrate into the rest of the consciousnesses that are around you. You're very much interested in your own database, your own history, your own narrative, and all that kind of stuff. So you lose that sort of thing. And his whole thing is very much like the Buddhists, where it's like if you don't evolve, if you don't grow, well, then you just show up on Earth again, and you respawn, continue and respawn, and you just have to do it all over again. And uh, the whole idea is that physical reality exists exclusively for this purpose. Physical reality exists. This layer of it exists. So consciousnesses are constrained into a body, more or less, and that they have to face each other, and they have to see what happens when they get this faculty of free will, and what do they do with their free will? You know, how do you use your free will? That's what the whole game here is supposedly about, that what you, what you do with free will determines the quality of your consciousness, determines the quality of your growth right there. And the more you evolve, the more options become available to you because you've demonstrated that you're mature enough to have more options, to wield more power, and to go into different places and try more things. You know, so it, that's, that's the part of it that I'm really attracted to, actually, because we are lacking a new moral philosophy. We don't really have a moral philosophy right now. We, we have some, uh, you know, secular humanist vision that you're a human being and I'm a human being and, you know, we're brothers and sisters and your misery and my misery, you know, are connected. And, you know, I agree with that. That's definitely totally true. But when you get up on a, on the fact that we're all, you know, embedded in the same fabric of reality, that when I hurt you, I'm actually hurting the same fabric of reality that I am. You know, and a lot of us don't really think about that. We really just think about negotiating our own personal gravitation around people and circumstances and things like that.